Why don't you tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about what we're going to do today, you know. My name is Matt Lefebvre, and uh, we've been working in the gospel tent ministry. I pastor the Calvary Baptist Church in Whitmore Lake, Michigan. We've been working in the tent ministry for 10 years this year, setting up the gospel tent in different parts of the U.S., and, uh, and preaching underneath it, soul winning. I believe that the tent ministry uh, is a great ministry. We've had some very good success with it. Uh, we just held a meeting a few weeks ago, and, uh, and in that meeting we had 29 people saved. And so uh, the old-fashioned tent meetings still work, and uh, good Bible preaching. And, uh, and so we, we just appreciate doing it, and uh, we love it here at Canaan Baptist Church, being able to come here, set up the tent with a good crew. Uh, we can get this tent set up. It's a 40 by 60 tent, and uh, it typically takes us a couple of hours if, uh, if we've got a good crew of guys that will listen to instruction, and, uh, and they always do that real well here. So we're looking forward to a great week here and what the Lord is going to do. Can you just give us an outline of uh, just the big steps of what we've got to do to set this up? I know we gotta, we got to lay out the tent like they're starting to do now, and then... Um, you know what do we do then lay the stakes and once we once we lay out the shell of the tent we'll lace the tent together it's a three-piece tent uh, the middle section is a 20-foot section then we have the two end sections and they kind of get laced together and uh, and then we'll lay out all the poles and the stakes will go around the tent and then we'll get out the sledgehammers and uh, and the real work will begin and, uh, and we'll drive uh, all the stakes in, kind of get the tent to a semi-lifted position. And then we'll grab the, the two, it has two main poles that lift up the center of the tent about uh, 12 or 15 feet into the air, about 15 feet into the air. And, uh, and we'll, we'll do that uh, sort of in progression and then go around, tighten everything up, put the sides on it and platforms underneath there. Okay, and, and how much is, uh, how, how big a space do you usually need to um, put up this size tent? This tent is, is 40 by 60, and so we'd li we like to have about, uh, about 55 by 75 space to put this tent up, uh, if that is available. That is, that, that's pushing right to the smallest possible space we can put it on. And um, what, what's the website of your ministry? Uh, you can see the, you can see the tent uh, at cbcwhitmorelake.org. That's cbcwhitmorelake.org. Great. Thank you, preacher. Yes, sir. Hey, it's good to be out here in the tent tonight, isn't it? The Lord does some amazing things under a tent. But we see in this festival the lesson that God wants us to learn from tents. There's several lessons we're going to look at. Three of them uh, are that they will remind us of past provision. They will remind us of patience in the pilgrimage. And thirdly, they will remind us of a promised peace that God has for us. Those three points, if you're taking notes, I would encourage you to write those down. Why do we need a tent? Because a tent reminds us of a very real and serious biblical truth that we as Christians need to live with. We need to live with this in our minds that we are just pilgrims passing through. So notice first of all, see the tent was a temporary structure. It was a structure that, that reminded them that they had not yet arrived, that they did not have a, a home, that they were living in booths or in tents. I haven't seen you in about a year. So show us how you loop that, loop that in together. Bottom. How do you how do you loop that in? Push it in the hole. Awesome. Go ahead and go all the way around if you want on that. 
So all the loops are tied in from the... In. If it don't, this thing will unravel. Right. We'll set it up. We'll... So all the loops are tied into the tent post part of the area down to where the hole on the side is. Yep. I'll finish it up right here. Then what do you do when you get to the end? Just tie it in the knot so it doesn't come unravel. See where all the poles are? Just take it right up there by the pole like this. Take this. And you're never going to be able to carry it. Put the final loop there so it all ties in together. Okay. And then what do you do with the top of the pole? Top of the pole? Yeah, don't you put it in the... Just put it in the loop right there. That's got a bolt on top of the pole too, right? Knock this right here. Get these I'll nuts off. i that round ring, brother John. Yes, sir. So long, so forth. All right, great. How long have you been helping Brother LaFave send up Ted? Uh, probably a couple of years, three years now, anyway. What are you doing, Lily? Autumn, what are you doing? I'm putting these by the pools. Oh, okay, good job. Yeah, usually it's when you start getting over by you yeah, more. Right here. <laughs> we still have a pollen hammer if we need it. But, and it ain't that guy swinging the sledge. <laughs> I thought it was. Oh, it is, brother John. So notice first of all, see the tent was a temporary structure. It was a structure that 
that reminded them that they had not yet arrived, that they did not have a, a home, that they were living in booths or in tents in the wilderness. God wanted them to remember a time when they depended on God for His provision. It was during those years in the wilderness when the children of Israel relied on God to give them the manna, the bread from heaven. The book of Psalms calls it angel's food. I don't know what that means. Right on, the, right on the concrete, probably. You want to kind of keep it at an angle going out, right? You know what? It's okay. We figured out a new way to tie the straps so that they don't slide up the pole. So oh. I never worry about the angle anymore. Wow. Too much. Yeah. We realized that if you did this and did that. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get that. Um, all right. So you have a loop. Oh. Okay, so you, you... It already has a loop. So you put the loop around it, make a second loop, and put it around it. Okay. And then just slide it down to the bottom, and it doesn't slide up. It pulls on itself. Okay. It's, it's very tight. It's much better than leaning them. They, they're weak when they lean. They pull up in the... When the ground gets soft, they'll tend to pull like that. This way they don't pull as much. Awesome. When did you when did you learn that? A couple of years ago, a year ago, a year or two ago. Okay. I don't remember. I was uh, at another at another tent meeting, and somebody did that on their tent, and I saw that. So it works really well. He found the he found the concrete. You're on a piece of concrete, man. You're probably not gonna. It was during those years in the wilderness when the children of Israel relied on God to give them the manna, the bread from heaven. The book of Psalms calls it angel's food. I don't know what that means, but that sounds very interesting, doesn't it? The Bible says that it was, it was, uh, it was a spiritual thing, and, and we've never seen it since. They've never seen it before, and God provided for the children of Israel in a miraculous way. When he says, I want you to dwell in booths or in tents, he's saying, I want you to remember when you relied on me for your daily bread. It was during this time when God uh, commanded Moses to get uh, water from a rock in the wilderness, first by striking the rock, and then God told Moses to speak to the rock to get water in the wilderness. That's what he said. He said, he lost his joy. Don't let this I'm happen. preaching about that on Wednesday night, so they think they need to remind me of my sermons. So what, what's, the, what's your sermon say? Uh, is that joy is internal, happiness is external. Happiness is on happenings. As Dr. Hiles would say, some days I'm happy, some days I'm blue. My, my disposition depends on you. <laughs> hey, Brother LaFave, tell me one more time what, how you do this. Make a V out of them, point the two poles towards each other. It just keeps the tent from shifting one way or the other. And just go up a little straight from that pole. Keep going, keep, there you go, right there, about like that. Yep, so do the same thing there, those two poles towards each other. Brother Jeff, you help him go, go around and get that, me and Elliot will get the big uh, poles. This time reminds us of the provision of water in miraculous ways. If we remember, this reminds us of the quail that, that God uh, gave the children of Israel in their time uh, in the desert. It reminds us of their, their, their shoes. The Bible tells us that their shoes never wore out for 40 years. Now that's some quality footwear, I might, I might suggest to you. 40 year shoot. Man, I wish I had some shoes that lasted 40 years. And I know some of you ladies don't want to hear that because 
you, you don't want to stick with one fashion for 40 years, and I guess I can understand that. But see, uh, when we look at the tent in the scripture, in the, the booth, the temporary structure, it reminds us of a day in which we had to rely on God for our daily provision of food, of clothes. towards me, bud, and you're probably going to have to help them. You're going to have to help them. It takes, a, it takes a good strong... Hey, guys, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go in and set this, so just when I say stop, stop, and let me get that adjusted. When I say go, you're not pushing that way. You're pushing that way. Yeah. So you're driving the bottom towards the ground while pushing the tent up in the air, okay? All right, and it's going to take work. You're going to drive it hard. Keep coming. Okay, hold up. Okay, guys, you're going. Drive it. Drive. Push, 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 push. Hard push. <laughs> it's all right. Drive it up. Go. It's, you're twisting it. Down. Down to the ground. Down to the ground. Okay, now. Now push. Push. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Here, here, here. Here, guys. Set it down. No, no. Don't let it go all the way down. Here. Oh, 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 let me show you something. Let me show you something. Oh, oh, oh man. This tent's heavy. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys, look. Brother Jeff, get right. in here. Let go. Yeah, right. with him. Okay. Now, you ready? Drive it up. Drive it up. Beautiful. Okay, we need to go that way. Pick it up. I'll go back. All right, let's grab the other one. Oh, you're you, you just need to, you gotta kind of pull in unison. It's, it's easier said than done, I know. <laughs> All right, Brother Jeff, bring it under right there. Go on that center one right there. Loosen it and just tip the tent that way. Towards you. That way. Hold it, guys. Hold it. You, know, you got to swing them out over that way. No, no, no. Go the way. Yeah, go this. No, no. I want them over there. Towards Jack. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep, going. keep, going. keep, going. keep swinging. Keep swinging. Okay, stay there. No, okay. I gotta back off. Back off. Okay. Back, back off, guys. Back up, back up, back up. There. Are you in? Not no. yet. He'll let us know. Alright. What's the deal? Hold there it. we go. Watch your fingers. Okay, guys. Okay. Now, uh, wait a minute. don't sit. Keep it straight. All right, now ready? One, two, three, go. There you go. Up, up, up. Stand right there. Leave it on that angle. Okay, pick it up and bring it over here. Right there. Okay, Elliot. Tighten that strap and pull it that way. There you go. That's good right there, Elliot. That's good. You pulled it back. Okay, guys. Pick this up. Yeah. Put the pole up. Yeah. Get on that. You're a strong guy. You got it? Here, we're gonna go up. Keep going. Right there. Now we need to go fix that one so that the front doesn't go back. We'll, we'll restraighten it. I just gotta get this one straight. Are you ready? Late. Keep going. Keep going. Keep. Good. I think that's a lot better. Elliot, you're going to have to give me something on that end strap. It, it shifted 
Is there more tight? Uh, just this one. Got to have it loose. It's just really off. There you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look out, look out, look out. Okay, now, much better, okay, now tighten that side, yeah, go ahead and straighten them, but I'll do the straps. a little bit loose on that side because you've got to straighten up those center poles. You won't be able to do that. So what's the strategy in straightening the, or tightening the straps? Uh, just sitting these poles up straight, tightening this down so that it pulls the tent down around those poles so that it keeps the tent case of a windstorm attached to this location. So we just basically go around the tent and kind of tighten it out. We're pulling the tent to a taunt position. All right, Brother Jeff, level. Get one of these young guys and you guys level up those center poles, please. And it'll, it'll change when it gets tight enough. Check this again because we moved on an angle. See, we went a little bit. We need to kind of go like right there. Ready? A little more. Right there. Let's just go with it. Leave that in there and let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and tighten it basically at this point. Uh, helping to set up the tent. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. What, do you, what did you do? Is this the first time you ever saw a tent like this being put up? No. You seen a tent like this before? Yeah. Did you help on that with that one? No. Is this the first time you helped put up a tent like this? Yes. You helped with the straps too, huh? Yeah. Well, that was good work. What are you gonna come to the tent meeting this week? Yes. You excited about it? You've been to a tent meeting before, right? Yes. What do you like about tent meetings? Like, you're outdoors and you get to, like, you get to feel the fresh air and stuff. Good. Being in the church. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. What about the preaching? Keep going. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of enthusiasm. Rilla Fave, what do you have to watch out for when you're tightening these straps? Uh, nothing really, just so that this, that this doesn't slide back okay and that'll loosen but other than that the only thing we're looking for is just that the tent is tight and doesn't have any okay. what we call swills in it here those will hold water so Nothing swills else. like a dip in the yeah, tent dip in the tent you want the water to be able to run off and not sit in it Why do we need a tent? Because it reminds us of our past provision that God has given us. Number two, it reminds us of the patience in this pilgrimage. And thirdly, it reminds us of the promised peace that is to come. I told you to keep your finger in a Hebrews chapter 11. Go on back there. Verse number 13. Hebrews chapter 11, that chapter is called the, the Hall of Faith. Not the Hall of Fame, because we don't need the fame of this world, but the Hall of Faith. 
these people believe. And notice what, what Hebrew says here in verse number 13 about all these people that he's, that he's written about in the chapter. He says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them far off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Oh, my friends, why do we need a tent every year? Why do we need a tent? Because it reminds us that he has prepared for us a city. He it reminds us that we are strangers and pilgrims on 